Good morning, Malta and Goza, and welcome to another edition of Love and Daily. I'm your host, Chris Pergine, joined today by JP John Paul at How are you, Jay? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Can you hear I'm me? Good. Yeah, I can. Uh, it's a Friday, uh, so it's our last episode for the for the week. I just want to remind you that on Sunday, it's Father's Day. We have this competition going on with Browns and you, uh, who are sponsoring Love and Daily. Um, and all you need to do is tag your dad in the comments below, and they will uh, get in the chance to win 80 euro worth of laser hair removal treatment from Browns and you. So do this now, just tag them there. And, uh, and they could be today's winner. So uh, let's start with the headlines of today. Uh, the government has backtracked on who gets to get the 100 euro COVID-19 voucher following a bit of a backlash yesterday from uh, foreign residents in Malta. Um, a migrant boat is currently uh, in Malta's search and rescue zone carrying pregnant women and a child. We need to see what's going to happen over there. Um, there's been a rise in Maltese women seeking abortion pills from overseas charities during the lockdown period. Uh, Pieta pavement billboards that pissed everyone off uh, are being removed following published backlash. And a Zurich councillor has pledged to find the thieves who stole 13 trees. Um, let's start with the first story, Jay. Uh, what, what happened yesterday with this hundred euro voucher? Yeah, so you know a lot of back and forwards, Chris. Um, yesterday, you know, um, government came out, Robert came out saying the hundred euro voucher would only be eligible for multi citizens. Obviously, that that spread a lot of backlash amongst the foreign community who were also looking forward to having this hundred euro COVID voucher to spend on restaurants or bars or, or whatever to enjoy themselves. Um, it resulted in a lot of backlash. A lot of people came out, a lot of restaurants showed their support as well for, for, for the foreigners and slashing prices. And they, um, you know, following this public backlash, there was petitions as well. The government finally did, made a U-turn basically and said, okay, um, foreigners as well are gonna be eligible for this 100 euro voucher. Um, before it was taken off the electoral register, so it will only be eligible for multi citizens. Now I think it's taken by um, those who are on multi identity as well. So uh, good news at the end of the day, um, but it was definitely a, 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 a controversial and a bit, a lot of back and forth and hectic for a lot of people. But foreigners are, you know, happy to know now that they can finally be eligible for 100 euro voucher just like everyone else. Yeah, by foreigners we mean foreign residents. Okay, so uh, the, the, the issue was that. Uh, there was the the general. So Robert Abella had said that this will be had originally said this would be for residents of Malta, um, and then you know it came out that it would just be the general election register, which would be uh, only restricted to Maltese citizens. Uh, and now they've extended it to uh, people on the identity Malta list of foreign residents, uh, permanent residents in Malta. So yeah, that's good. And let's see, um, you know how we. Uh, how we start enjoying these when we get them, first of all, and what we're going to do with these 100 euro vouchers. Uh, in the meantime, you know, that, that's, you know, not the first you then uh, Robert Abela made or the first uh, backtracking he's made. He had a similar issue with uh, migration a couple of weeks ago when he had boats outside of, he was keeping boats outside of Malta's uh, territory, uh, and then he was kind of forced to bring them in after 40 days. Um, because there was some some ruckus aboard, uh, and uh, now we know that there's another migrant boat uh, in Malta's search and rescue area today, um, carrying uh, a number of pregnant women and a child. Um, this has been reported by Alarm Phone. Uh, JP, what, what do we know about this case? So yeah, um, la er, last night Alarm Phone uh, tweeted that um, they received word of a a. a a, a boat out in a uh, motor search and rescue zone that was carrying 49 migrants fleeing from Libya. Uh, apparently on board there are a number of pregnant women as well as a child and it's a dire situation because the boat is apparently filling up with water. So in an urgent appeal last night Alarm Phone tweeted out um, for relevant authorities to step in and intervene and to help these 49 migrants. Um, so far there has been no updates since then. Hopefully, um, you know, AFM or whoever whoever is responsible for this and wherever they may be at the moment because they might have drifted out of motor search and rescue zone. We don't know. Whoever is responsible or for it has has picked them up and has taken them to safety. 
but again, it's also this issue of you know, motors migrant issue continues to be uh, continues to be an issue. Uh, it was an issue a few weeks ago, you know, when we had we brought these 400 migrants in. Um, there were a number of, of anti-migrant protests held in Valletta um, because of it. Um, but obviously, the solution isn't to just keep them out there and let them drown. So it continues to be an issue, an issue that needs to be addressed. But yeah, so far there has been no updates since last night on or where these migrants are or if they're safe or not. Um, and following on our third story, um, uh, another a more serious topic as well. Um, there's been a, the Guardian this morning reported a rise in Maltese women seeking abortion pills from overseas charities during lockdown. So a, a number of women uh, seeking seeking help from um, several charities, uh, including Abortion Support Network in the UK and Women on Web, uh, reached out to these charities during lockdown to seek abortion pills. Um, Kind of showing just how dire the situation is. In fact, in some cases, um, these women, the women who reached out, um, were even said they needed abortion pills because they had allegedly been raped by the partner throughout this period. So um, you know, it but again brings up the issue of, of Malta's uh, very harsh and and non-existing abortion laws, really, um, and the question of of whether it's time. Malta introduces some sorts of abortion laws because clearly there is the issue of women having, you know, women are in a, in a desperate situation to to receive the abortion pills and are having to look overseas uh, to overseas charities to to receive them. Uh, in some cases as well, they've they've been so desperate they've re resorted to illegal abortion pills, which has resulted in uh, partial mis miscarriages, um, um, accounts of women, you know. Uh, um, Becoming, you know, harming themselves because of they're taking these pills and having go, having to go to hospital bleeding, uh, and feeling ashamed ashamed by it because because it is illegal in water. So really, it it brings the discourse back to to the forefront and and really kind of is a clear indication that water needs to re rethink its abortion, its, its its approach to abortion, and at least put it out on the table for discussion. Because even during lockdown, we've we've seen this increase in women. Uh, seeking abortion pills, and it's it's this not a safe so safe approach as it is at the moment um, for them, and we really have to take care of them. So it's 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 an issue during lockdown. It continues to be an issue now. Um, what do you think, Chris? Yeah, I, I think it's really interesting that um, a lot you know the, this whole COVID situation has brought this issue up to the fore because before uh, that, you know, abortion was just a taboo topic. You know, people would just uh, fly abroad to, to, to get their abortions uh, and, and you know, we, we could be happily like sort of not discussing it and leaving yeah. this as, as a total ban and being very proud of our total ban on abortion. I think what 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 COVID situation has done is it's um, forced women to, to start taking uh, abortion pills and, 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 and the whole, you know, these, these sort of back alley abortions you know that could be uh, extremely harmful uh, to them and 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 i think it's not the discussion it's also very interesting that the guardian uh, is discussing this issue and is talking about this creating a bit of a spotlight on what does uh, abortion ban last week they had also spoken to former prime minister alfred sant and labor mep alfred sant who said that um, you know, it, it's inevitable that this what what is considered civil right uh, in the EU um, is is introduced in Malta to some extent. Uh, we also had uh, another Labour MEP, Josiane Kotayo, said this is not a black and white issue. You know, this is something that we need a serious discussion on. And I think it's um, I, I think that is the the, the, the important point. You know, we actually need to discuss mm -hmm. this issue. Stop sweeping it under the rug. Stop pretending it doesn't exist. Stop, stop pretending that it's okay. You know, uh, if, if it's done in Malta, you know, as in, there needs to be um, some reckoning with with this issue. So uh, yeah, it's being brought up. So uh, our next story of the day, uh, we I'm, I'm not sure if you've noticed those uh, mini billboards that. Uh, were placed all over the the Peta seafront, but um, they have certainly pissed a lot of people off, uh, and now uh, they're being removed. So, uh, Cami Applegren was um, a former MEP candidate with the Party Democratico. She uh, brought this up and she took photos and said, "You know, this is ridiculous. This is blocking access to our pavements. This is, you know, hideous." Um, and, and sure enough, the company that was advertising. Uh, its products on these on these sort of small structures all alongside the the pavement has removed 
um, these these adverts. Um, I I think though the the structures remain there, so hopefully they will too be removed and, and not just replaced by other uh, another company's adverts. Uh, what, what do you make of these, JP? Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't personally see them myself, but I have seen the company's advertisements all over Malta, so I feel like they're doing a good job on that front, but it was definitely an issue, um, and it's a bit of a partial win, really, because the, the advertisements have been removed, so obviously there's some they've, they've, they've understood what the problem is there, but those structures are still in place, so those, those structures are still on the pavement, so whoever's responsible for, for, for those is also responsible for blocking the pavement, and like you said, it, it, it blocks, um, you know, uh, access to wheelchairs and, and 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 bikes and other forms of transport people might take on the pavement. So um, it's a bit of a partial win. I mean, I guess the, the company got good advertising from from the whole whole, whole fiasco. Um, but uh, it's got it's good to see that they've actually taken taken the right steps and and have removed the advertising. Now it's whether these structures will actually be removed um, because they are a hindrance to to, to public life and, and public and and public spaces. Um, and our last story, Jay. So our last story is with regards to a Zurich local council who has now pledged to find thieves who apparently stole 13 trees from, from the area. So a bit of a, a bit of an interesting and slightly strange story considering why why would, would someone steal 13 trees? But Kenneth Faruja, who's a local council, council of Zurich, and who I believe is also responsible for the environment of the area, uh, has taken to Facebook and social media to pledge to to catch these catch a person behind stealing 13 trees um, from a, a kind of new new garden in, in the area. He's also put out a call to action to anyone who knows anything that's happened or, or, or why they might have gone missing. So if anyone has information information on, on where these 13 trees went, then uh, you can reach out to him. Uh, a bit of a sad story as well, considering that they, they've made this effort to to kind of rejuvenate the area and, 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 and be more environmentally conscious. And then overnight, someone just decided uh, to steal certain trees. Uh, one, what they would do with them or what you used to have, no idea. It's, it seems very strange, maybe for their own personal garden, who knows. But um, yeah, that, 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 that's the gist of it, really. And if you do have any information, obviously get in, get in touch with Ken Farouj on Facebook and let's help find where these 13 trees went. Yeah, I mean, it's the last thing we need, right? With with uh, Mosa's lack of trees generally and the trees being uprooted for roadworks and things like that. Um, and, and I think this is uh, not, not an isolated incident. I, I think um, local councillors deal with this quite frequently where even flowers and plants from roundabouts and things like that are, are removed. I know some restaurant owners also, you know, see their, their pots being being removed from outside the restaurant. So it seems that there are some people who are really, really cheap and uh, want to just like uproot trees. And, and, yeah. and uh, I was once told that um, the, the trick is to create, is to plant trees that give fruit because then people will go and pick the fruit instead. I see, okay. <laughs> so, um, take note of Kenneth Faruja for future. <laughs> Um, so that brings us to the end of our program today, London Daily, uh, brought to you by Browns and You. So just a reminder that today is the last day for you to win um, our in our competition. So we've got um, 80 euro worth of laser hair removal that can be won for your dads. All you need to do is tag your dads in the comments below um, and we will... Uh, choose them as a winner and and they will get to uh, get this this voucher which allows them to have an hour of laser hair removal so uh, they want to feel a bit better uh, this could be a really nice nice treat for them um jp thanks for that and i think that brings us to the end of our show so have a day full of love and